Our next speaker is Juuso Manninen. Uh, Juuso is a PhD student from Nana Group. And Juuso is going to talk about quantum sensors using carbon nano devices. Okay, so thank you, Teiko, for the kind introduction. So let's change the topic a bit now and talk about carbon nano devices. So we all carry all kinds of really small scale uh, sensors uh, with us all the time, for example, in our phones. So if I were to take a photo of you, smile, uh, there are uh, micromechanical gyroscopes inside the phone who are trying to figure out in which direction the phone is moving and to compensate for my trembling hands and to trying to stabilize the image. However, these types of technologies, they typically are silicon based instead of uh, carbon based or based on carbon nanostructures. But uh, carbon nanostructures, they have huge potential for different kinds of applications. So I will go just a few that have popped up in recent years. So there's detection with nanotubes for organic vapors. Uh, there's uh, flexible electronics. So I guess there are now some uh, cell phones coming out with uh, foldable screens where you can fold the phone into a tablet. I doubt that those would still or yet have any graphene in them, but that, that technology is also coming. And then there's water filtration using graphene, uh, photo detection, uh, optomechanics with nanotubes, so really high sensitivity, mass and force sensing, and some medical applications uh, like uh, glucose biosensors in this case. So maybe uh, in, the, in the future your phone can measure your uh, blood sugar and tell you that it's low and that is why you are so crumpy. And, and th this all shows that carbon nano devices, they have huge, huge potential, but in terms of industrial wide-scale applications, we are not there yet. Where we are in terms of uh, industrial applications uh, for uh, nano nanocarbon is basically this, so graphite in pencils. That's where we are at. And now, in the following, I would like to add a couple of works to this large pool of potential uh, from our uh, nano group. So let's start, start with uh, mechanical resonances. So everyone has seen this type of picture where you have three coupled mechanical resonators and depending on how they are coupled and how you drive the system, uh, you can generate all kinds of uh, interesting dynamics. Uh, these types of problems have been considered and solved for a, a very long time. So how to make it interesting today? Boom, we make it out of graphene. So uh, we have a monolayer graphene disk that has this Corbino geometry. So it's basic like basically like a donut. And you uh, couple it to two gold beam resonators. And all of this is completely suspended. So all of the parts can vibrate individually. And you basically have this type of system. So first of all, you need to detect the resonances that are in the system. And we do that with uh, frequency mixing techniques that are basically similar to your uh, basic radio communication. And then you need to identify the resonances and determine what are kind of the characteristics for the resonances of these types of uh, resonators. So if you see something odd, uh, you can m maybe say that, okay, these resonances may come from out outside of the system. And we have just recently published a paper with different graphene resonator geometry where we can detect the resonances of the surrounding lift-off resist using 
these graphene resonators. So uh, potentially in the future you could have also uh, graphene-based uh, resonance sensors, maybe also in, in your phone. But th this is all classical mechanics, so nothing quantum yet. So, I but if we apply a magnetic field through the device, we can detect uh, quantum hall states with the device. So the idea here is that as the device is oscillating over the uh, in some gate voltage or the gate capacitance is changing, which changes the uh, charge density, and this can be seen in magnetoconductance measurements, and we can see quantum hall states. Also, there's the emergence of uh, magnetization oscillations. So this is a picture of uh, frequency dependence of one of the mechanical modes uh, in terms of uh, applied magnetic field, and you can see that there are some dips at some quantum Hall states, and this behavior can be explained with magnetization oscillations, namely the Haas van Alphen effect in, in graphene. So this first example really shows you that even a really simple system in principle, just coupled uh, mechanical resonators, uh, can uh, give you a hold of a really interesting physics once you apply graphene to the mix. So let's, let's move on to graphene bolometers or graphene thermometry. So again, simple concept of a bolometer. There's some radiation that comes in. It heats up the material. The resistance of the material changes and you measure this change in resistance and you map it, map it to some temperature scale. So Again, simple and old concept. Again, we apply graphene to the problem. This time it is not suspended. It is instead sandwiched between two boron nitrate layers and it is coupled to two uh, superconducting leads and it's on top of a silicon substrate. So graphene is ideal uh, uh, for thermometry because of its very small electronic heat capacity, allowing it to potentially detect very small changes in uh, temperature. So let's first talk about the heat transport in the device. So there's some uh, radiation uh, coming in. It heats up the uh, electrons in graphene, and some of it can escape to the superconducting leads. However, through electron phonon coupling, the graphene phonons are heated up, and then so on, the phonons in boron nitrate are, are heating up. And there can also be some direct electron phonon coupling uh, between graphene and, and the boron nitrate layer. So how to measure temperature with this type of device? You cannot uh, very simply measure the change in resistance in graphene. Uh, but what you can do is you can have two of these junctions and one of them you heat up like this. The heat goes to the boron nitrate layer and then there's another device that is connected to the same layer and it thermalizes to the temperature of the boron nitrate and you measure the other junction uh, where you can monitor the switching current. So the uh, point between the device being in a superconducting or in a normal state. And you can see that, sorry, I went way too far. Uh, you can see uh, on the picture on the right that the switching current has very clear temperature dependence. And if you are able to operate the device very close to the switching current point, you can potentially uh, use it for single photon detection because uh, even a single photon would be uh, then able to, let's say, dip it over the edge. So again, simple concept of, of a polymer, but once you again apply graphene to it, it becomes really, really interesting. Third topic that I will go through very, very briefly 
is carbon nanotubes in optomechanics and the keyword here is towards since this this work in our group is in in its early stages so the idea is to have carbon nanotubes uh, suspended ones that can be applied to microwave uh, cavities and micro microwave cavity optomechanics schemes where they can be used as Josephson junctions and operated as qubits and with qubits in these types of schemes you can for example enhance the optomechanical coupling uh, and go potentially even to the uh, strong coupling regime so called so what has been done so far on this topic uh, is some characterization work of the super supercurrents and uh, the res mechanical resonances in these structures and also some some physics in terms of Shapiro steps so kind of a DC contribution for the IV characteristics of a Josephson junction when you uh, apply an AC pumping to a Josephson junction so potentially huge possibilities for high sensitivity mass and force sensing for example if one is able to enhance the optomechanical coupling so as I show you our group and the people who are mainly responsible for the works presented here I would like to conclude that uh, graphene and carbon uh, nanotubes they are not there yet in terms of industry ready applications but as we saw in this presentation the field of var variations where graphene and carbon nanotubes can be applied to it's really huge and maybe someday they will even find find their way to your cell phones so thank you very much thank you let's Um, in your system where you coupled the graphene to the gold resonator, um, how do the, I mean, everything is suspended, so I guess you have resonances also for, from the gold, from the part where you have suspended the gold. How does this affect your measurement system? Uh, well, in terms of the mode identification, we use, for example, COMSOL simulations where we have built the whole system in, in COMSOL and we can look at the mode shapes and where they are in terms of frequency and try to match the experiments with with the um, uh, wi with the uh, simulations and al also these um, how to say it uh, the d detection of quantum hall states seems to be that uh, the some of the co gold modes or where the modes are, uh, modes where the gold is also taking part uh, seem to be beneficial in terms of det detection but I cannot say much more about that yet okay let's thank the speaker again <laughs>